Okay, we're at section uh, 15.2, uh, particle in simple harmonic motion. Uh, let's pick off where uh, we left off. We left off where acceleration is equal to um, minus k over m times x. Well, of course, minus kx is the force uh, from Hooke's law. And uh, we know that the second derivative of position, the dx, uh, the d squared x dt squared, uh, is acceleration, so the acceleration is equal to minus km. And we're going to do a substitution here where we say omega squared is equal to km. And we're going to do that to do a, a substitution. Um, so uh, dx squared, uh, dt squared, so the acceleration is equal to minus uh, omega squared x. And we're, we're looking for a differential equation that satisfies this. And the one that does is uh, xt equals a cosine omega t plus phi. <coughs> Let's do it. Let's do the first derivative of x t, uh, uh, xt. So uh, dx dt is velocity, um, and that is uh, uh, dx dt is a dt uh, ddt of cosine omega t plus phi, which is equal to minus. Uh, omega a sine omega t plus uh, phi. Uh, so, and, and then if we take the derivative of minus omega a sine omega t plus phi, uh, which is d, uh, which is acceleration d squared uh, x over dt squared equals minus omega a d d t of sine omega t plus phi is equal to minus uh, omega minus omega squared a cosine omega t plus phi. And you can see that that satisfies uh, the top blue box, the, the top blue box, uh, d squared x dt squared is equal to minus omega squared x. Well, you can see that the x is the a cosine omega t plus phi. Um, now, what does that look like? A, a cosine omega t plus phi, uh, you you can see it's a it's a uh, sinus it's a harmonic oscillation a sinusoidal shape and the phi is the little offset if it were just cosine omega t it would start with this uh, peak occurring right at the uh, the zero axis uh, t is the period um, if there's no phase shift this phi is you can see in the lower the lower picture, if phi, the phase shift is equal to zero, then it does indeed, it is indeed a cosine, um, a cosine uh, uh, function. Uh, so omega, since omega squared, um, it's, omega squared is equal to km, uh, omega is equal to the square root of km, uh, where the, K is the spring constant and M is the mass. Uh, so consider a graphical representation of a simple harmonic motion is described mathematically as X sub T equals A cosine omega T plus phi. When the particle is at point A on the graph, what can you say about its position and its velocity? Uh, the position and velocity are both positive. Uh, the position and velocity are both negative. Uh, the position is positive and the velocity is zero. The position is negative and the velocity is zero. The position is positive and the velocity is negative. The position is negative and the velocity is positive. Well, we know it's the, the top half above the T is positive. So below the T is negative. So the only ones... Uh, that could possibly be uh, a suitable answer, given that anything below T is negative, would be uh, B, uh, D, and F. However, uh, if we look at the direction of the velocity, it's, it's actually going up. So the position is negative and the velocity is positive. Okay, let's look at another, uh, another quick quiz. The figure shows two curves representing particles undergoing simple harmonic motion. The correct, correct description of these two 
motions is that simple harmonic motion of particle B is of larger angular frequency and larger amplitude uh, than that of particle A. Particle B is of larger angular frequency and smaller amplitude than that of particle A. The smaller angular frequency and larger amplitude than that of particle A or B is of smaller angular frequency and smaller amplitude than that of particle A. Well, you can see that particle B is going uh, quite a bit faster. In other words, there's more, it, it covers more territory back and forth than particle A. So it has a, uh, uh, a larger angular frequency. Uh, so that's A or B. And uh, the amplitude, it looks like B maybe has a larger amplitude. Let's see if, no, it's, uh, Okay, yeah, it is a larger amplitude than that of particle, uh, uh, particle A. So A is the correct answer. Uh, the larger, it has a larger angular frequency and larger amplitude than that of particle A. Okay, and uh, well, I think we're still, we're still on this. Uh, mathematical description of simple harmonic motion. Uh, omega T plus the period plus V minus omega T um, plus the phase angle is equal to two pi. In other words, from a peak to a peak is, is, um, is, is two pi, that's one cycle. Uh, we know that the period is uh, two pi divided by omega. Well, omega is two pi f, so um, f is equal to one, one over t, uh, f is equal to omega divided by two pi, um, and two and omega equals two pi f equals two pi over t, and uh, <coughs> the period is t. The frequency is f, so the period is equal to two pi over omega equals two pi over the square root of m over k, not k over m as we saw earlier. The frequency, however, is equal to one over t equals one over two pi times the square root of k over m. Um, the velocity is the first derivative of position, so the velocity is equal to uh, dx dt, uh, which is minus uh, the x is equal to a sine a cosine omega t plus v. So the first derivative of that is a minus omega a sine omega t plus v, and the acceleration, the second derivative of position is equal to a minus omega squared a cosine omega t plus phi. Um, v max is equal to omega a equals to minus uh, k over m uh, times a, the amplitude. The max acceleration is equal to omega squared a equals uh, k over m. Since it's squared, we reduce the square root sign. Uh, omega squared a is equal to km over a. <clears throat> and you can see the um, uh, the different, you can see the amplitude, the period is from peak to peak uh, or zero crossing to zero crossing. And if you do by zero crossings, you have to do it in the same direction. In other words, if you always go from a down zero crossing to an up zero crossing, that's almost, that's only half of the period. That's only half lambda. You have to do zero crossings from the same direction, like it's down going to a down going or an up going to an up going. Um, so you can see um, A max, V max, and acceleration max, and they're all, uh, uh, they're all offset from, from one another. <clears throat> so in other words, it, now notice that if you line it all up at the, when the amplitude is the, the greatest, that's when the, uh, if we're talking about a spring, that's when it, it reaches on either end, and that's when the velocity is zero. Well, when is the velocity maximum? It's when it's going through the zero crossing, and you can see that uh, from the dashed line, and uh, the acceleration, um, the, as it's going through the zero crossing, the acceleration is zero. The acceleration is greatest when it's at either end of, the, of its max position. Um, okay, let's see. An object of mass M is hung from a spring and set into oscillation. 
the period of the oscillation is, is measured and recorded as T. The object of mass M is removed and replaced with an object of mass 2M. When this object is set in, into oscillation, what is the period of the motion? Well, let's look at the equation. Let's, um, um, so omega, we can see it from here, the Vmax omega is equal to uh, minus K over M. So if, if you replace M uh, with 2M, it's going to be uh, the one half. Um, it's going to be. Uh, I'm, I'm saying it's going to be uh, d. Uh, no, I was wrong. Two uh, square root of t, two over t. Let's see if I am looking at that. When the object is said, and what is the period of the? Oh, the what is the period? I was looking at the omega. Let's go back. The period. <laughs> is equal to two pi. The period is equal to two pi the square root of m over k. So if you double the m, you have uh, you're going to double. Uh, there's going to be two m under the square root, and it's uh, uh, it's going to increase by the square root of two. Uh, and let's go look, and that's why it's square root of two over t. I got it wrong. I was looking at the wrong equation. Okay. Uh, we're still in the mathematical description. Okay, uh, x of t, the position is equal to at cosine omega t plus v, omega equals k over m, uh, x sub zero equals a cosine, um, a cosine v equals uh, a, and v, v, x sub zero, you know, it's at zero, at, at zero t, I mean, if t equals zero, then it's just cosine phi, and it's so it's at a. Uh, at v zero, it's minus omega sine phi, which that's equal to zero, and x equals um, a cosine omega omega t. Uh, let's see. Let me make sure I'm looking at the right. Okay, yeah, I wanted the examples. Okay, so we can see we can see the the when we start at x, these are the periods. If you, from peak to peak is t. So from peak to null, from the lowest point is half t, and to the next null is three halves t. Uh, the velocity uh, you can see where each of these line up, uh, and the acceleration. And I've described how how the uh, at x at either extreme the velocity is zero and the acceleration is max in the opposite direction and you can see that on these okay um, x sub zero is equal to a cosine uh, phi equals zero uh, v of zero is equal to <coughs> omega uh, minus omega a sine phi, that's the initial velocity. So x is equal to the initial velocity divided by omega cosine omega t minus pi over two. Um, and let's, the, let's look at this here. A, x t equals a cosine omega t plus phi. t is equal to two pi over omega equals two pi square root of mk. And we can have some uh, examples of when this is used. A bungee jumper hangs from a bungee cord and oscillates up and down. A guitar string vibrates back and forth in a standing wave with each element of the spring moving in simple harmonic motion. A piston in a gasoline engine oscillates up and down with, within the cylinder of the engine. An atom in a diatomic molecule vibrates back and forth as if it, as if it is connected by a string to, an, to the other atom in the molecule. Um, okay, let's stop here and we'll go next, we'll do the next section, uh, energy of the simple harmonic oscillator.